make sure that we're not sending desktop audio. We're not? Okay. Surprised it doesn't say first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I read that one. Yeah. Hey, Skepsis. How are you doing today? Hello, Yocan87, Anthony Browning. Hello. Today, I downloaded a new program. I, I bought a new application off of Steam a new thing called Tile Setter, and I'm going to try to learn how to use it and um, maybe make some cool tile sets today. So I made these really quickly in A Sprite. So um, anyway, how's it going everybody? I'm Jerky from Driftwood Gaming. Thanks for coming to the live stream. Uh, I'm joined with T for at least now. Hello. And. Um, yeah, we're going to be messing around in GMS2 and uh, messing with Tile Setter today, as long as well as A Sprite, um, Photoshop, the usual stuff we need to work on our project. The end goal here to make a quick small scope project that we can publish on itch. Hello, K Zayman. So let's start over. Like this was my test run. I'm going to start over here and I'm going to select. Um, a sprite. So I'm going to go with the 16 by 16 size, uh, 16 by 16 pixel size tile sheet. In order to make a tile set with tile setter, you only need two tiles. You need like your solid block tile, and then you need like a single border. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new one of those. So I'm I'm getting uh, these two tiles. So it's 16 by 16, but we're going with two tiles. So I'm going with a width of 32. So we'll take this 32 by 16. I'm going to select a palette. Um, I don't know, let's see, let's go with this one. And we'll select a kind of a solid color. And I'm just going to paint the whole thing solid. And then I'm going to set my right click to be transparent so that when I right click something, instead of having to select the eraser, it just erases it. And I'm going to go over to the bottom left. I can see the um, location. And I know I need 16 pixels and it starts at 0. So when I go to 15, that's the ending of 1. And 16 is, this is, oops. I've, i got to select my, this one right here. So I can go here. And I know this is the beginning of the second tile. And then I can go back to this and go boom. So I've got these two tiles. Now I just I just need to make the border on this one. So let's go with a like just dirt and grass tile set. So I think maybe we'll start with this brown color down here. Like that. And then I'll go with a lighter brown. And then even maybe a more dirt. Brown. Oops. Go like that. And I'm not sure the best way to do this yet. Like I said, I'm just learning how to use this new software. So I'm just going to try to follow the quick video I seen. So I've got like this border, and then we have a solid dirt tile. And, okay, that should be, I think that's all we need. So I'm going to save this as the second one. So this will be grass tile set 2 as an A spray. And then I'll, say, I'll export as a PNG. And then what I'm going to do is take this into the new application, Tile Setter, and 
let me see, a new project. So over here, I'm going to import that image I just created in a sprite. Wait, wait, no, 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 wait, wait. Oh, no, no, not save as, import an image. Yeah, okay, right here. So I've got these, this image, and just by putting the image in here, it saves all of the tiles within it. But what I'm gonna do is delete this one, and with this one, I'm going to use the magic of this program and click on build borders as a blob and now it makes like a simple tile set uh, of just the blob of that one block but what we can do is go in here and select the other image for these other sides and, and now Yeah, I think that's what it's got to be. And it's adding the borders and it's auto rotating them. So now we made this kind of like mud. I guess it's not really a grass tile set. It's a it's a mud tile set with grass on top. So it's a dirt grass, I don't know. It's a tile set. But what I want to do is take all of it, but I'm also going to leave one blank space right here because I'm going to be using GMS2 and GMS2 needs this first top left tile set to be um, the transparent tile. So what I'll do is right click this and um, export this image as this, but we'll use grass tile set 2 blob and now I'll go into GMS2, go to my resources and, and create a new sprite. And I'm going to import the second tile set as a blob. And I'll just call, call this S underscore uh, grass 2 I'm going to do this a few times until I figure it out, really. And then I'll go to tile sets, create a new tile set. I'll select the sprite that I saved as a tile set. And now we have this to look at. And you can see how the top left corner is our transparent tile. It doesn't even have a, a, a border around it. So I would need to give that extra space. And I'll call this TS underscore grass 02. And um, I mean, that's pretty much it. You could use that as a tile set. But I want to auto tile it at least a little bit. So I'm going to click on auto tiling. And this is a little complicated because sometimes you can't find the right pieces to, to build your auto tile. But I'm going to do the best I can. I definitely don't have enough for a 47. I'm going to do a 16 tile set thing. Um, top down or platformer? Um, I'm not sure yet. I'm really open to suggestions and trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this like fly by the seat of my pants type thing. But let's try to make a... I'm just doing this as like a therapeutic learning session thing and hopefully with the end goal of, of publishing a free-to-play game. Whatever that may be. Let's go ahead and add a 16, um, 16, I guess, auto tile. I don't know what it's called. 16 tile auto tile. So what we're doing here is we're using this thing that we've built with tile setter and a sprite and we're going to fill in the best to, that we can all of these tiles. So this one will be a solid block, and this last one will be a completely transparent block, and then do the best we can to fill the rest in. And I'm sure this will be a process that is the hardest part, to figure out what goes where. So let's say this one's probably that one, and then this one could be that one, and then this one is that one, and then this one is that one, this one is that and um, that this one is so something on the top left and on the bottom right where is that one at?
top left, bottom right, right here, boom. This one is just the one for the top left. That one is like that. This is the top right, bottom left, which is that one. And then I guess that one is that one. This one is this one. And then this one is this one. This one is here. This one is here. And then this one is here. I mean, I could have got any of this wrong. We'll, we'll see if we have any issue when I'm auto-tiling this, if I got it right or not. But anyway, let's go over here and rename this to be Auto-Tile Grass 02. Now that we've got this set up, if I go to... I'm going to close this one. In fact, I'll close all these windows that I'm not using yet. I'm going to close everything and open it up as needed. I also... Um, Get out of here, dust and crumbs. There we go. All right, so let's go to our start. And to, to add a tile set layer, you click on here, and you create a new tile set layer, and you can name it and whatever. Uh, I'm going to actually leave this alone. See, I, made it, I did this before, right before I started this recording or this live stream, and quickly went through the process trying to figure out what I'm going to be working on. And I'm like, well, this obviously isn't right, and it needs refinement, so uh, I'm going to swap out this one with this one. And I see that it's still got some issues here. So let's start by erasing everything. Oh, first of all, um, you can manually edit and design, design it, your map, with the tile set, one tile by one tile, or make brushes, but I want to set up an auto tile. So I'm going to erase everything here. And then I'm going to try to draw like a map. So in my auto tile, I've got some weird artifacting somewhere. I'm going to zoom in a bit, with control and middle mouse, and just look. So somewhere along the line, when it's supposed to show like there's there's an error somewhere, right? So let's go to our tile set again and the auto tiling feature. Let's try again. I don't know what I did wrong, but we'll find out. This. Let's uh, let's try this one instead. And this one. Maybe try reversing these. Try this. That would be this one. And then this one is here. Put that one there. That one is here. I think that's that. And that. Yeah, this one's probably farther off and then transparent. We'll call this one ST underscore grass 022. Go back to our start. And let's just select that tile and go to this as a library and draw this one instead. I'll zoom out and uh, erase everything. So just looking at it, this is what the auto tile would, would do. 
So it's still really messy and not quite right. So I was closer the first time with this one, but not 100%. And you can use multiple. I could even um, add a new layer and have two different tile sets on top of each other, which is really, really cool, which I will do. I'm hoping that this will work really well. There's another feature that's supposed to work with Tile Setter that lets you import directly to GMS2, but I had heard that it was buggy, and I haven't tried it yet. But manually putting it in here is kind of more tedious. So let's see if we could take this and import the, export this directly to GMS2. So GMS2 assets, um, I guess we could put this GMS2 2019 art assets came over. Or, or you know what? Keep it in a sprite folder. Because that's where I have everything else. So let's go ahead and make a folder in here. And we'll call this GMS2 um, assets, I suppose. And we'll call this grass02 um, blob. I suppose. Just something different. Never done this like this way. I just bought this uh, application, so I'm not even sure. But then I would go to maybe add existing, and then it would look for this. This is the tile set blob. So it added this one, which is weird looking. Huh. All right, what else did it save? Did it set up auto tiling? It didn't set up any auto tiling. put it in an order that makes it clearer. It doesn't seem like it made it much clearer. I mean, I think this one is that one. Then you've got... Yeah, it's definitely not easier. Is that supposed to be that one? Hmm, I'm not really digging the export directly. I'm going to give it a shot though and see if it works. It's supposed to be bottom left here. Hmm. Yeah, just like what a messy chunk of tiles. Like, how are we supposed to decipher through this in a cohesive way. Like, it's, it's less intuitive, unless there's something else. Maybe, is there a way to add something here to it? What other assets? Okay, add existing. It gave us the, the tile set and the sprite. So this is a sprite. Yes. So this is the sprite form of it and then the tile set form of it. Which you can just select it and then put that in there. Like I see why it's doing it like that. That's unnecessary. So let's uh, delete that out. When you add it as the tile set, it automatically adds it as the sprite. Yeah, exporting to the to GMS this way 
is less intuitive than just exporting it as an image. This is a mess. Don't recommend this at all. I'm going to delete it. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Maybe it auto, it's that way because it will auto tile better, but like how setting up the auto tile is a pain and it's messy. But looking at it in, uh, looking at it like this makes more sense because you've got a square, you've got the solid wall and whatnot. Let's delete this one. The second one wasn't that great, but we'll add another 16 and let's try again. Maybe I can, maybe I can tile it better. So let's go with that. getting faster at it. Okay, so that was pretty quick. Let's try this one. Does it look any different than this one? Yeah, so this one is different here than here, and this one is different here to here. So I think this one, the second one, might look clearer. Let's uh, go ahead and st underscore grass O2 underscore O2. Replace that. Now going back to this star. Hello, Ivan K. Warrior. How you doing? Hello, Mama Kato. Yesterday you said platformer since you wanted to do something different from your RPG Maker stuff, but you're the boss. <laughs> yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out. I think platformer might be a better idea because you can do plat you can't do very you can't make platformers very easily or well in uh, RPG Maker so to distinguish it as something different now obviously this is a much better auto tile it's it definitely leaves something to be desired but it's much better so let's go ahead and try to just manually change what we need Let's make a little map and change what we need manually. So once we've got it like uh, auto tiled to the best of our ability, we can manually go in there and overwrite things. Of course that takes a little bit longer. I do like the fact that it's completely custom auto tile tile set that I made myself, like with a sprite and tile setter. Like I, I drew, I only drew two things, and then I'm mapping. So I mean, I do kind of like that. So it has, and, and as I get faster. Sorry if I have uh, incomplete sentences. I'm working on it. That 
The next thing uh, I'd have to think about is how I'm going to handle collision. I do like that I can have multiple layers of tile sets. Infinite, really. So it doesn't auto tile as well as I'd want it to, but I, I might be because I'm not setting it up the right way. It's very likely that I just have, when I'm setting up the auto tile, I'm not doing it right. I'm selecting a couple things that aren't supposed to be there. So I'll go back to A Sprite and I'm going to make a, I guess another one real quick, but something different. Let's, let's do something similar, but this time I'm going to have, I don't know, it looks really bad, let's go like this. Curious how that would that would work if I did instead of a solid blob with this texture do anything would the texture mess it up? I'll just keep it numerical to to stay as organized as possible. Hello, Epic Mighty in a Cloud. How are you doing? Any plans to do Pixel Game Maker MV tutorial? I don't ha own that software. I I mean, I'd consider it if I got it for free, but I don't think I'm going to buy it. Is there anything in the documents as to where to put the parts of the tile tile set? There could possibly be. I think trial and error is going to be your best friend here. Let's go ahead and go a new project. And then we will import. this one, zoom in a bit, delete this, right click this and build borders for a blob, and then go here and select the other part that we added and removed. It doesn't necessarily look bad. It's not an amazing tile set, but it, it has its own kind of style, I suppose. So I'll select everything right here, and I'm going to export as an image is better, really, unfortunately. So let's save this as three blob. Go into here and import that blob three image. It has a texture to it. I'll call this sprite underscore grass three, and we'll just let that be. Go into our tile sets and create a new tile set. 
and we'll select grass three as our as our tile set. Call this TS underscore grass03. Let's select our auto tiling options and make our 16 by 16. Let's try to do better here. So wherever there's transparent is where you open or close edges. Oh, there's another, t there's another option here, open or close edges. Huh, that's interesting. What if I change the other ones to change the way the edges are drawn? Hey, Doc Weez, how you doing? <clears throat> Undertale was made in Game Maker, yeah. I think Delta Rune also. Anyway, let's can let's try to do this. I'm going to keep in mind that there's a, a function here to open or close edges. We'll call this at underscore grass03. I think we could just, uh, from, from here, let's add a new tile layer. And let's make this layer invisible so that I can come back to it. And on this tile 2 layer, I'm going to select the grass 3 tile set and use the library here to draw. So just from the get-go, looking at this block, it's weird because it has the, the four border dots on the inside. That's not how it's supposed to look. Right? Like, so that... obviously has an, an issue with something there. It Okay, in particular, where it's supposed to have a dot in the bottom, it's like I've got this one and this one mixed up. The L corner and the top right dot is mixed up. So a straight line looks like that, a left line looks like that, diagonal looks like that. Yeah, so we're mixing up a couple of things when we're selecting our auto tiles. Let me try to toggle the open or closed edges and maybe it'll change things. I don't know if I have to refresh something to do to make that look different. I'm sure once I figure it out, it'll be a lot faster, this whole process. This is a learning experience. I'm going to delete this and start another one. Okay. It's strange.
let's try this right here, this right here. I'm going to treat the green as if it was going to be transparent. This is definitely going to not work right. Now I'm just really curious what's going to happen. That's what's going to be jacked up. AT underscore jacked up for sure. Oh my gosh. I'm like, this one's going to be jacked up for sure. Guys, <laughs> you just got to learn how to interpret it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now it works. Now it just works. That's why if you're, if you're pretty sure it won't work, don't, don't discredit. Like, don't be like, oh, I know this won't work, so I'm not going to try it. You could be like, it's probably not going to work, but I'll give it a shot just so that I can say I tried it. Because every now and then, this sort of thing happens. And it works. And that's, that's great. What are you guys listening to? I've got some different video game instrumental music playing background, but... Uh, I've uh, muted the desktop audio so that it still uh, claims. I love that. That's great. Okay, so I'll, I'm just going to call this grass three because the other ones don't work right. I didn't set them up properly. It's very interesting how I'm like, uh, what if I reverse these two things? It, I don't think it, it doesn't look like it's supposed to work like that, but it does. So that's good. All right, now that I have, you know, now that I know how to do it, basically, I can draw maps quickly. If I want to make a platformer, I'm going to have to make some sort of gravity. Let's just raise this a bit. Alright, so I wasn't expecting to have to work on uh, making some sort of gravity for the player today. But once again, I'm not sure what this project's going to be, so I'm kind of just going to go with it. You don't get it, what's the problem? Well, nothing anymore, Boro. I mean, I kind of figured out how to make it an auto tile set that actually looks, it doesn't look amazing, right? But it's a, a custom tile set that, that works, that I made, like, quickly. I mean, I spent some time learning how to do it, but, like, 
I could do it again in a much quicker period of time. So uh, now when we start our player on here, he's just going to walk around because it still doesn't understand that it's that I want gravity. So I have to make an object that's going to generate gravity. So if I press Control T, I can look at all my resources, and then I want to open up my object that is controlling. You know what? Let's make a new object. Let's make um, O underscore gravity. <sighs> All right. So on with gravity, we're going to make. I'm sure there's a thousand ways to do it, and some are better than others. I'm going to just try to work with a, a simplistic logic. What do we want to happen? We want the player to be moved to be moving down if they're not on a solid object. So we have to do a couple things. We have to define inside our tile set what's a solid object, or we have to create an object that we spam. I think more resource intensive is the placing objects that are, that are solid. <clears throat> it's probably better to use your tile set. So I imagine at some point we're going to be doing that, but to as far as how easy it is to make it, it's probably easier to just make an object that the player can't collide through or is like solid. So in our uh, gravity object, <clears throat> make the player stick to the ground. Make player stick to ground. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Alright, so... There's built-in gravity. Built-in gravity direction. Gravity direction equals... Two seventy being down, so we'll say gravity direction is two seventy. Then we can say gravity equals one. I mean, I guess that's strength. One pixel per frame. I'm assuming. I have no idea. Let's read it. Gravity is a cumulative force and will accelerate the object if you choose not to cap the final speed. Okay, so we might have to put a terminal velocity. Do I have to use physics in order for gravity to... Is this part of the physics engine thing? I don't think so, right? It's just like a, a built-in thing. So we made this object of uh, gravity, and we've said we want gravity to push the player down, and we want to push the player down at the strength of one, whatever that is. So um, we need to put that on a map. So let's go to this map and go to the instance layer and drag and drop gravity here. And um, the player is being created here when we enter. So wherever the player is created, they should fall off the map. Let's see what happens. They'll fall right through the dirt too, because I haven't said Okay, obviously it's not working like that. <laughs> Green best man. Um, let's look at our green best man object. I don't want to enable physics. I want to make it like more kind of like a handcrafted pixel perfect type thing.
So if we make the green vest man a solid object, <clears throat> let's make a new object and we'll call it O underscore solid 16. And what we'll do is give it a sprite. So let's make a new sprite. We'll call it S underscore solid 16. And this will be a 16 by 16. And it's just going to be a blank, transparent object. In fact, it doesn't have to be transparent. Let's make it a very light red. Where's my opacity? Alpha data. Okay, and then I want to go like this. Oh gosh. Actually, I'll do just a border. That's good enough. And now our solid 16 will have that sprite. Oh, and uh, solid 16 collision mask will be the entire thing. Yeah, rectangle, the whole thing. And we'll make this a solid object. <clears throat> now, I don't know if it's going to be resource. intensive to have a lot of these. I could just use a tile set. I've done something else tutorial on it. I just forgot how I did it. Where I used a tile set collision thing. Probably better to do that. Can I promote my adult oriented GMS2 platformer on your Discord? It's uh, NSFW. Uh, it, or it, we don't... Uh, that's not true. We don't want um, not safe for work content on the Discord. So, I mean, you could promote it, but just don't show anything. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Jasmine? How are you doing? All right, so let's try to place this solid object here. I guess it would be an instance layer. Wow, maybe I made a mistake with the color scheme. Can't really see it very well. Let's change the sprite to be red with just a slight transparency. Oops. It needs more than what I gave it though. Okay. Looks a little bit easier to see. Oh wait, hold up. I can go like this and stretch it, can't I? I can. So technically, the player shouldn't be able to walk through that area now. <laughs> Andy can. Sure. Why not? Okay. I think it's because of the way I'm moving my object as well. And to make it invisible, you just take that off, but I'm keeping it visible until I get it working right. 
Um, that's not working, but that's fine, because it's much better to do collisions with the tile set itself. I'll just have to watch some more tutorials and uh, read up about it. Let's take a look at our gravity object. I wonder if the gravity is just being applied to um, this object. Plus it's on the step, so I think if you're going to set gravity for an object, it would just be set on the start, on the, on the create. So hold up. Let me just try to cut this from here and put this on this player. So on the create event, We just give the green vest man gravity direction and gravity and see if it makes that sprite fall. Yep, it sure does. Okay, so at least we figured that out. I'm going to delete this gravity object right now because I don't need that. Let's change this to 0 0.1 and um, make a condition on the step if speed greater than equals to I don't know 3 then uh, speed equals 3 so that means it won't go past a certain speed let's try it again Yeah, so it gets faster, but then it only goes so far. How do we check? Okay, wait. I have another idea. I don't know if it'll work with gravity on. Let's go to our controller. Somebody said yesterday, why am I putting the controller on its own object instead of the player? And I didn't have a good answer for that. My answer was, I'm not sure. And it does make it more complicated putting it here. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense to just remove this step and put it on the player. So, I think I'm going to do that. So, let's go ahead and cut all this from the controller and go to the player step movement paste it in here and now all of the instances of referencing this.x doesn't need to be there this.x doesn't need to be there if instance exists condition does not need to be there because this code won't run if this guy's not here so we can get rid of a lot of code here we can get rid of this we can get rid of this and this in fact if we go to control find and I go find and replace all instances of O underscore green, gosh, O underscore green vest man. 
and I replace it replace it with nothing, I can go like this and boom, I just get rid of all that. Just gotta get rid of the dots. I should have should have did the dots too. That's fine. Save some time if you had a huge chunk of code. And now it should work the same. Of course we don't need this closing brace. This opening Wait, we do need that closing brace, don't we? Yes. Open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close. And in fact, I can shift tab that back to where it's supposed to be. My jank way of controlling the, the character. But we can also make another condition in here. I can just make it and encapsulate the whole thing. If place meeting uh, x y object underscore solid sixteen, and then go like this, tab it out. But we'll use an exclamation and I need to close this off properly. So if we're not meeting this object at x and y, then move the player. That might have broke my controls, but let's just see what happens. Okay, I'm going to just uh, mute out the gravity here for now, comment it out until we figure something else. I'll be right back. going on here, Doc? Try some typing something on default? You guys talking to each other here? Okay. Let me just uh, try this without gravity. So that let me go down, and then it stopped me when I hit the, uh, obviously the, the place meeting, the, the sprites were on each other, and now it broke all of the controls. But it did stop the player. I mean, gravity pushed it down, so I'll have to implement my own type of gravity. Keep staring at it, Jazz. It'll become less magical the more you stare at it and more like, oh, I see. I think I have to do this kind of code for each um, each instance, sort of. Instead of encapsulating the entire thing in it, I'll need to go something like this.
and then right here, check um, if it won't meet this solid object in one extra pixel. Because what's happening is it's colliding with it, and then it stops all of my movement. So if I can check to see if it will collide with it, instead of letting it collide, um, check to see if it will collide, and if it will, then don't move into that object. I think that makes more sense. So I can simply copy this, or this, like that, and this will be x minus 1, and then I paste it here. And this is regular x, but y minus 1. And also got to include that. And then paste this here. y plus 1. And include that. I mean, it looks kind of sloppy to me. Like It looks like a lot of extra stuff. I mean, it's organized, but it's just kind of like a lot of extra stuff. But if it works, that's more important to me right now. At this like learning stage, I just want it to work, and if I get it working, then I'll I'll figure out how to optimize. And I got it working. So instead of turning off controls when we do collide, we set it up so that it won't move you into a collision instead. So, I mean, basically this setup right here will let me start doing a platformer. All I have to do is figure out what I'm going to do for some sort of gravity. I'm obviously not going to use the engine's built-in gravity because it bypasses my, my code. It uses a different type, type of function. But I really like this. This is cool. <laughs> okay. It works. Alright, so now I have to figure out if I want to incorporate a, an object to control gravity on everything or if I want to give everything its own gravity. I mean, it kind of makes more sense to make one object to rule them all. But it would be kind of interesting to have uh, uh, different objects have their own gravity, even slightly. Arca Diaz says, I will never watch any Game Maker videos. I will solve all the problems on my own. That's the fun part uh, about it, just solving these things. Doesn't it feel really good, like, when you're like, I figured that out. <laughs> like, I did that. Like, I'm sure it's been done a million times and probably in much more better ways, but that's not the point. It's, uh, you're not trying to win a Guinness record here. You're just trying to figure out, you see an issue. You try to find a solution, and that's kind of rewarding and fun. Do you know if Pixel Game Pixel Maker MV is good? I don't personally know if it's that good because I I can't say because I don't own it and I've never used it. I will say from watching people use it that I don't particularly think it's that great. Obviously, if I was really hyped about it, I would just get it and use it and talk about it and show people why they should use it. Um, I don't feel like it's it's worth my investment at this time, but I think that also has a lot to do with I already have a lot on my plate. I don't have the time. I, I would rather spend it, spend it in RPG Maker MV and GMS2 right now. I hear really good things about Godot Engine. And I hear people calling it Godot, which kind of like, maybe it's supposed to be called Godot, but I'm still going to call it Godot, because Godot sounds cooler. I hope the dev of, of Godot or Godot understands that. But anyway, that's a completely different beast. It's node-based. But I hear really good things about it. It's, it's a powerful engine, good optimization capability, similar to GMS2, but it's different in that it's node-based instead of like these object-oriented things. Have you thought about the player's goal yet? 
just picking your brain. Um, I've thought about uh, very little as for the end game of this project, except for that uh, I want to put it on, on itch. So, Godot is for the chul chids. <laughs> Uh, I'm thinking now that we've kind of got with this setup, it'll be a little platformer, a basic platformer that's got maybe some RPG elements. I think that would be it. Something, something you could pick up and play for a few minutes and be like, oh, that was cool. Next thing, you know. I mean, even if it's like 30 minutes, like a 30 minute kind of platformer game. That'd be good. T, did you just kick Boro out of the chat? <laughs> or did did Lily take your phone and start smashing buttons? I'm like, how come Boro's messages got deleted? Oh no. Boro, Boro, so so sad, so sorry. Can you unban him, T? Whatever you did, undo. Whatever Lily did. <laughs> unban Boro. He was having a nice conversation with Doc. He's been timed out. Does that mean he can't say anything or he got kicked from the stream? Boro. My, my four-month-old daughter has, has struck you down with a timed out button. She's yelling at me. <laughs> yeah. We love you, Boro. Sorry about that. You have, it's only 300 seconds. So let's in incorporate our own gravity then. So, gravity, okay. Let's just do the same thing. Gravity would pull you down at all, always, so we'll go like this. If you're not running into a solid object, um, like so, then y equals y minus 0 0.5. We'll try that for now. Of course, I, I don't know if it would really work like that without braces. But now we also need a way to jump, jump, so if keyboard, check, press, I think there's a VK for space, right, yep, VK space, Y, equals y plus 5. This is very rudimentary. Oh no, we've made negative gravity and the pressing spacebar puts you, pulls you back down. Oh no, we're going in outer space, guys! Oh, but also, we need to make another check. Or if that, that way you would you could jump through. So, and place meeting. Excuse me, X, Y,
I don't think we should use place meeting for this distance. We need to do something else for this. Distance to distance to object. <clears throat> and distance to object I kind of want to do this differently. Let me let me get rid of this, cut this, and then in here we'll say case distance to object. Oh, I'm just sure. I I I just cut that, so let's go like that. No, no, not a switch. Let's use a else if. So, if, there's probably a better way to do this, it's fine. If distance to object 16 is greater than 10, then y equals y plus 10, and then else if A for loop would probably work better here. Why do I need two encapsulations here? I think GMS2 will require an encapsulation for that. I mean, I'm sure that would work, but something about it tells me I should do this like that. basically copy this now, paste it, and change 8 to 8, I don't need to copy it every time. Like I said, I'm sure there's just a better way to do this. That's fine. Just curious to see if what I'm doing would work. When you're learning, don't get too hung up on optimization. Just try to have fun. Otherwise, you'll get burnt out. You just stop doing it. Also, I forgot to reverse things. <laughs> plus. Plus. Because adding to the Y will push you down. Maybe I should remove up and down at 
this point. I think I need to comment out the up and down. To comment out a lot of stuff, you can do a slash or an asterisk. That way the player can't move up and down by pressing W and S. They just go left to right to A and D, which we can change to left to right or whatever you want. Really. Gravity should push you down, but not through the solid object. Spacebar should make you jump. I didn't change jump. Adding to the Y will push you down. So jump needs to be subtracting from Y. I think I need to make a state as well. So let's make a new variable at the top of jumping. Uh, jumping equals false. We'll set this up on the create. Yep. Setting a boolean on the step doesn't really work that well. I know it's only used once, but that's fine. I'm not going to use gravity like that. Clean this up. Player initializing. Player checks. So we, we already know what jumping is. So it's set to false. But we can say if jumping equals false. Or shorthand, we could just go like this. If we're not jumping. then we'll have to indent all of this, which I'm fine with. Boom. If we're not jumping, so when we are jumping, we turn jumping on, when we press space, or actually, we turn jumping on after we, we make the movement. So if we did any of that, that right there, so we don't need to put it inside here. If we press space bar, we've made a movement, jumping equals, hold up, we need to be outside of this one. Jumping equals true. But how do we turn jumping off? Like how do we, how do we signify that we've landed? I think we can do if uh, hold up. This is still part of jumping. So if place meeting um, the place meeting. X, Y object. X, Y, O, object, solid, 16. But we won't actually touch solid 16. So we have to see if we are right above it. So adding to Y will push you down. So subtracting from Y will make you go up. So if we are right above solid 16, we will say that we are landing. So if place meeting one pixel above solid 16, then jumping is false because we are on the ground. And that should let us jump only once. So we can save that and try to play it. <laughs> Lily is a natural born moderator. Welcome back, Boro. Sorry about that. Hey, Katarina, how are you doing? Hello, hello there. So we're setting up a platformer. We've decided today that 
We have some floaty graphics. Spacebar is not letting us jump at all. Okay. So we've created this. We've set jumping to false. And then if jumping is false, it lets us do this stuff. But when we press spacebar, jumping is set to true. And maybe... If place meeting one pixel above, let's not do place meeting. Let's do something else. Let's do distance to object let's do distance to object is um, less than 2 let's see if that lets us jump Jumping is broke again. So we're not jumping from the start. So we should be able to jump from the get. Nope, something else broke. I've got some 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 issue here. Let's turn this off real quick. And then let's get rid of this. It'll let us jump still, right? I got to I got to test where I'm making an error. Yeah, but let's just jump. Let's just keep jumping. Gravity's coming. But when we hit the ground, we can't jump anymore. So why is it when we touch these, when we get to the solid object, we can't jump anymore? Is it because that the distance to the object isn't greater than one? Oh wait, do we have? Huh. I miss your first impression reviews. Oh, I still do them, Ekaterina. I did one, uh, was it last Friday? I did one a week ago. I did one a few days, I think I did one, I did two last week, actually. Yeah. I'm still doing them. Abracadabra on the screen frustrates you? I'm sorry. I mean, every now and then I just, just want to mess around with GMS2. Trying different things. So for some reason, my jumping breaks when I'm... What if I just go else? We, we do a catch-all. Else, y, plus, plus. No, that's just going to... When we press space bar, it's just going to move us up one. It is 10 pixels. We get here. Oh wait, wait, not plus, minus, minus. That'll move us up. What did I press? What does this do? Stop. I'll just play. This will move us up one, and then it'll move us up ten. So that's not the way it's supposed to be. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
Right, obviously, okay. This is not the way that I'm supposed to set up jumping. I want to scrap it. I'm going to scrap it. We're going to go like this for now. Like that. Get rid of this and this and this. Because it's part of this whole system. Wait, what is this? Oh, this is our gravity system, and this is jumping. I'm going to keep it here just so I can look at it later, right? I'm not going to delete it yet until I figure out a better way. But this was my first attempt at, like, some sort of jank jumping system, which I don't like. So let's start over. We have gravity working, but it's kind of feels floaty, so let's just say y++. plus plus. So we should fall faster, but we have no jumping. We can move left, we can move right now. We don't fall through a collision box. We can make this red invisible. I'm just keeping it there to illustrate. We have no jumping. So let's make a, a jump. If we're not jumping, then y equals y plus 20 jumping equals true. If um, if place meeting x underscore y plus one of object solid. 16, then jumping equals false. So if we're right on top of that object, then we're not jumping. This, was, this should let us jump really high, but not double infinite jump. Infinite jump. Oops, you know what I forgot to do? Is... Subtract. Oh, I forgot to check. <laughs> we made an auto jumper. We forgot to input the uh, if we're pressing a space. So if we're not, uh, when we press space, oops, so when we press space, if we're not jumping, have us go up 20 pixels and set our um, jumping state to true. And if we are right above uh, the object solid, then set our jumping to false. This should let us not infinite jump, but let us jump again once we land. Nice. Let's increase equals y plus 2. Let's increase the gravity. Um, I wonder if we can use like another function. 
forgot what I don't want to use physics, but like what was it? Impulse? That was physics, okay. Um, move object. What's the other way to move an object besides uh, impulse? Move an object without physics. I mean, it would be a whole different ballgame if I enabled physics in the room and use impulse instead of just changing Y's. Thank you, Ekaterina. Really appreciate it, Ekaterina. Feels kind of jumpy, like very jarry. It's not a pleasant jump experience, you know. What if we scrap this entire um, object, enable physics, and play around with that? I mean, for fun. I'm going to leave this the way it is. <clears throat> but what I'll do is create a new object. We'll call it O underscore fizzman. This is Fizzman. He's going to have the same sprite. <coughs> Excuse me. On the create um, setup. And then on the step, going to initialize. What we need to do is say uses physics. But we also need to set up this room as a physics room. Room physics, enable physics. And then there's built-in gravity. Now that we're using actual physics, we could just say gravity is 10 here. And instead of uh, drawing green vest man, we draw fizz man. We could just kind of drag and drop him there, but it'll still draw green fizz man. So let's go to the instance creation code. Let's go ahead and replace Green Vest Man with Fizz Man. Fizz Man! And now it won't make, uh, I don't know what this dumb stuff that I'm listening to is. You guys are probably listening to much cooler stuff than this weird stuff. All right, I'm listening to Chill Study Beats 5. Don't be terrible. Don't be bad. Games Antigos has subscribed an hour ago. Sorry, I didn't notice. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get the live stream chat up again. <laughs> Drift Man. It is Friday the 13th, huh? Hey, watch out for Jason. Oh! Hockey mask man. Wait, where is it at? Here it is. <coughs> so what's going to happen now? We have Fizz man. He's got no code. But he's going to... Oh, gosh. The camera is supposed to follow an object that doesn't exist. So we need to fix that. Let's go to... The room settings. Let's bring that down. Let's have it follow. Instead of green vest man, fizz man. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. 
<clears throat> Green Vest Man, you are out. Fizz Man, you are in. Oh! Fizz Man does not uh, play kindly. With my... Did we make Fizz Man a solid object? Let's try that again. He goes right through another solid object. Okay. Um, how do I set up? Because it's using the, the game's gravity. We're enabling physics, so we've got to enable some sort of gravity. Um, I want to use a tile set for collisions, but I kind of forgot how I was doing that. I could open up another project I was working on a long time ago and just look at the code that I was using. Um, anyway, let's do if keyboard check press vk space. We're going to do a physics apply impulse. We need to do an X position, Y position, X impulse. I think I can use zero here. Can I use zero here? X impulse, we'll say 10. Or no, 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 zero. Um, y impulse would be negative 10, I think. Not sure. Boy! <laughs> you see my guy? Fizzman be spinning. Set negative 10. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to use physics just for the hilarity that's going to happen. So let's see, I think I just go like, gravity's going to pull them back down. <laughs> you know what we need is a background, so you can see his movement better. Let's go to the background, and let's select a sprite. Actually, let's, uh, let's make a sprite and uh, Photoshop real quick. File, new, 64360, that'll work. Um, let's zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna do like a starlit, starlit gradient. Why is it creating new gray scale? Lines? I don't know why it's doing that. That's beautiful, perfect on the first try, I love it. And then um, a little bit of soft clouds. densities. Perfect. Save as a sky background O one. <clears throat> I forget what I'm doing? Yeah, I did. Okay, that's great. Um, go to resources, import our sky background. We'll just call this S underscore sky BG. Might have multiple, so we'll say a one. And let's select that background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we definitely want to use physics.
<laughs> oh god. Uh, we need to do uh, some basic controls, actually. Do I want to use impulse to go left and right? I don't know. I feel like what we can do is, is lock uh, imp on the setup. We can say, or on the step, image uh, angle equals zero. So he doesn't spin like a crazy something. Image uh, speed is for animation. X scales to change its size. Alpha to make it invisible. Blending we can change its its mode. But that's that's just we just change its angle right now. So we're gonna keep its angle zero, so it shouldn't spin like crazy. Hey Roger the Stickman. Ah, uh, not much. We're we're messing with. Uh, Tile sets. I'm using a new software called Tile Setter. I bought it on Steam for 13 bucks. It's actually 14 after tax. I don't think you pay tax in some areas, but I've been paying tax on all the stuff I buy on Steam for some reason, which I suppose is fine. But yeah, it lets you kind of troll out there. It lets you create little things like this. Like we can make another one real quick. I'm, I'm going to go with a 16 by 16 tile size, so I'm going to make a double, two tile um, image and whatever uh, software you want. I'm using A-Sprite. So 32 by 16. Let's move this over here, zoom in, and select a palette real quick. And then we can make a, let's go with like this, this brown or something. And then let me go to here. Nope. Darn it. Select this thing. So you have like a solid one, and then you can texture it if you want. Uh, let me texture it though. Actually, the spray paint texture. I've never used that. Oh, okay. Oops. I can just delete those. That'll work. Why is the spray paint so wild? Oh, spray? Let's spray four and a radius of eight. There we go. Whoa! One pixel opacity spray width, uh, 16. No, eight. And then what is this? Eight what? Eight by what? Eight by two? Okay. And then we'll do a couple more in there. I don't like that one. That one looks weird. Let's just go like a couple lighter ones. <clears throat> cool. That looks more textured. Let's go ahead and make a little border. Some, some grass. That's a good grass color. There we go. And then we can just uh, export this. We'll call it um, Grass Tiles Set 04. And uh, did we save that? I want to save it as a P and as a a sprite and a, am I saving it as a PNG?
That's a PNG. I usually save it as a PNG and then export it as. Uh, I usually save it as an A sprite and export it as a PNG, but for some reason just saved it as a PNG. It threw me off. Not a big deal, though. So the ultimate thing we need is actually a PNG. So that's fine. You take that over here. We're going to create a new project. This is Tile Setter. And we can right click here and import that image that we just created in A sprite. Let's take that. And uh, we can zoom in here. We're going to delete this one. I mean, because once we put it in here, it stored it. We're going to use it, so we needed to put it in. And then with this, we can right click it and build a blob. So it kind of makes a blob tile set with that. And then we can go in here and select um, like the grass um, border. And there we have like a little tile set. I'm going to select here and then export this as an image. And we'll call this one the grass tile set for blob PNG. And then I go into GMS2. I create a sprite and I import the blob image. Call it S underscore grass 04. <clears throat> and then I go to tile sets. I create a new tile set. What does this say? Uh, changes to, would you like to reload the resources? Reload them, sure. I don't know what that did. Something overwrote. Anyway. We can select the grass 04. And we'll call this tile set, I'm sure grass 04. And I'll select on auto tiling. And this is the most complicated part of it really, is getting this tile set to be auto tiled. So we're going to click on add a 16 tile set and try our best to make, to select the right tiles. So this is where it's gray, it's going to want like something solid and then where it's, well I will actually, where it's the lighter gray, it's looking for the solid thing and then where it's darker gray, it's looking for where the transparency would be. In this case, wherever there's grass is going to be where there's the transparency. So I'm going to say that this one is that. And then for here, um, the, where is this top left grass? I'm going to say right here. Where is the top right grass? Right there. Where is the, where the grass is on top? Yes. And then this one would be grass right there. The grass would be to the left. This is going to be, the grass is top left, bottom right, so that's this one. This is um, a corner. So where is the corner? The bottom right corner, I believe. So we're going to go with that one. And this is grass in the top left. Yeah. And then that is this one. This is grass to the right. This one is the bottom left corner. And this is where the grass is to the bottom. And then this one is the inside where the grass is to the top right. Nope. Somehow that one's off. Oh, that's the corners, okay. So this is going to be the corner where it's like this. This is gonna be the corner where it's like that. And then this is gonna be transparent, I believe. I mean, that's the most challenging part, like figuring out what tile is what. The rest of the process is pretty easy with the right, A sprite is great, and then the tile setter is good. I would, it, it has a long way to go. I think it's really helpful tool. It will save you time if you want to use it. Um, 
but it's not going to be like make all your tile sets for you. It's going to give you a tile set really quick with no artistic ability, just a little technical knowledge. So we're going to do AT for auto tile, grass, 04. And I think I set it up right, but I could have done it wrong. I've done it wrong more than I've done it right. So in order to test that, We go to a map that's got tiles. I said I've got one right here, which I was doing top down, but this is a uh, more platformer. But I can mute that or make that invisible and add a new tile layer. And I'll select a tile set for this, grass four. And then I'll go to libraries where I've got my auto tile. So this one I didn't set up perfectly. Where I have the top left is where I'm supposed to have the bottom right. So I got the corners wrong, I think. Yep, top left, bottom right, top right, bottom left. I can go back into the tile set and modify. Let me zoom in to show you. We can uh, hide these two. So let's go back to the workspace, go into this tile set, go into this auto tiling, and these four corners I got opposite. So starting with this one, instead of bottom right, I'm going to go with top left corner. And then for this bottom left, I'm going to go with top right. And then for this top right, I'm going to go with bottom left. And for this one, I'm going to go like this. Okay. Closing this down. Go back to our start. And now I've got it fixed. Now you can see when I draw the... Wait, 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 wait. back to this. Now when I draw, it's drawing it correctly. I'm drawing tiles. We've got a little tile set. And you could go in here and manually change stuff too. And like add. Like if you wanted to put this somewhere, you could. You could also make brushes. <clears throat> so say you have like a whole house and it's like 16 tiles, you can just drag all 16 and then it'll add it down here. And then you just click on that and it adds the whole thing. But this is your auto tiler. So that's what I was kind of messing with today. <laughs> I went off the screen, boy. <laughs> okay, so before I, I got distracted, I'm going to go back to the tile set too. I think it looks a little bit, I don't know, I like this one too. Maybe we'll go with tile set three. Maybe that was an improvement. The cool thing is you could mix and match them too. Because if I have them both visible, I can erase some here, and it shows the tile sets underneath them. So you can have multiple layers of tiles. I'm going to actually delete this first one.
delete this layer, tile load can go. <clears throat> and we'll call this floor one, and we'll call this floor two. some grass in there. Got bedrock. <laughs> This way you can have like a background layer that you can draw as if it was houses standing up and put the player in front of it, which we need on top of the layer, and then have the floor be right here and have this like as a background or something. So you can really mess around with your own perspective until you get it. It's a pretty good little system. And what I want to do now is mess with Fizzman and give him some, uh, some impulse ability. So if keyboard check press, um, let's do ORD and then we can say A so let's say if we're pressing A we want him to go left so we can say physics apply I think force Be local for us. Let's play. Let's try force. I don't know. Try force. Said it. Did it. X position. Y position. I'm not sure what it's referencing here. From X to Y, where it's coming from. When working with physics, you need to apply not only gravity to objects, but forces as well. So let's just say x, y, and then x force, left would be subtracting pixels. So let's say minus 10. In fact, we won't use check press, we'll just use check, that way it keeps applying this every frame, and we'll just say 1, and then over here we'll say 0 for that. Open, 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 close, 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 that should be right, yeah, that's fine. Let's copy this, and do this for pressing, oops, did I accidentally press enter with my knuckle, D. And we'll just make this adding one. <clears throat> I think plus one. I think you just use one. <laughs> one or negative one. Of course, gravity is going to pull this down off the ground, or down to the ground, until... Like, at a very, very fast rate. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So let's, let's do 10 and negative 10. We didn't notice it too much, but it did apply. Very spacey, that's the thing. 
I kind of want it to be like, when we press right, we should stop our momentum and make this a little bit. Let's try, uh, instead of force, let's try impulse. Physics apply. Maybe we do local impulse, I don't know. Let's try impulse first. Impulse <clears throat> x, y, negative 10, 0. And we can mute out that. So let's reverse the impulse and instead use force for when we want to jump. Physics <clears throat> apply force x, y. Actually, let's do 10, just to scale, uh, to judge it. So we changed a lot. Let's see what happens. Whoa! Hello! <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> the camera cannot keep up. Okay. Let's do impulse at two, uh, level of 2. And force, obviously that's not adding a lot. The impulse is adding much more. Let's do this too. Pretend that we have like a rocket pack on or something. <clears throat> More of a jet pack than jumping. We're going to call this Sanic the Revan- Oh my god, <laughs> he just took off! <laughs> okay, let's do with ones. Let's play with ones. Hey, okay, getting better. I want to make some sort of uh, with other outside room. So if it gets outside of the room, reset to middle. I want to just do this. If the object goes outside of the room, I want to say x equals, what's the middle of the room? 320. y equals 180. The camera can't keep up. The camera is just doesn't even know what to do. <clears throat> okay, let's try this. I don't know if this actually works. Let's get rid of that uh, event. Yeah. Let's check on the step if... X is greater than <clears throat> Y 
room width. <laughs> if x is greater than the room's width, that means it's farther to the right. So we're gonna we're gonna apply an impulse that's gonna make it move to the left. And if x is less than zero, then do the opposite and apply an impulse that moves to the right. So I think with this code, it will automatically force me on the screen if I do it like this. So if y is greater than room height, then apply the impulse So if it's greater than room height, it's moving down, so I need to subtract, add, add a negative, impulse, negative y impulse so that it moves up. And then the opposite, if our y is greater than zero, or less than zero, that means it's above the room. Then we need to add to Add an impulse that makes it go. And it'll do this every frame, so it's going to just keep adding a new impulse every frame. But what I actually need to do is make everything a tenth of its current value, or even cut it in half. <clears throat> Cutting it in half. Or you know what? Let's just cut it in a tenth. Let's put a dot in front of everything. Point 0.1, negative point 0.1, point 0.1, point 0.1, point 0.1. Point one. But gravity is still super duper strong. So we're going to reduce gravity down to half of what it currently is. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I don't I don't understand really. Why is it not pushing it back up? Because gravity is still too strong. So let's let's go back to gravity. Let's go with gravity 8. Pixels to meters. What if we keep gravity 10 pixels to meters reduced to 0 0.05? Is that going to change anything? The impulse control is not as good here. That feels so much better reducing that. <laughs> it should just bounce back. I'm not. I let go of buttons now. It should just bounce me back into the screen. But it's fighting gravity, so it won't do it with, against gravity. Okay. It's interesting. Very interesting. Let's get rid of the the dot. happening. <laughs> I'm not pressing anything now. <laughs> just, it's just slingshotting itself back and forth. <laughs> this is great. This is the game, guys. <laughs> oh, shoot. This is fantastic. I don't have to press anything. The game plays itself. Hey, it like slows itself down. And gravity brings it down. Check that out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, guys, this is a perfect time to end it. 
we've decided, great progress today, we've decided that we're going to make a physics-based platformer. We're going to use tile setter to make our basic terrains and tile sets. Um, we're going to use a sprite for our sprites. We're going to use Photoshop for backgrounds and other stuff like that. Um, we're going to use, of course, GMS2 as our engine to do this. And um, I need to figure out what I'm going to do with collision. i got to set up something for collisions. And, um, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We'll make custom sound effects. We'll make custom music. Um, all of our own sprites. All of our own art. We'll try to make a very small platformer game and put it out on itch over the next month or so. We'll see what happens. But that's where I'm going to end today's live stream. Thank you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, if you like what I'm doing here, give it a thumbs up. If you like uh, game development and you're interested in the field, i got a thousand videos on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, please, and um, hopefully more will come. Give it a little space bar and a couple of impulses to the right and let it bounce like crazy. <clears throat> awesome. I released a game using RPG Maker MV, if you haven't heard already. It's called Legend of Driftwood. It's an epic adventure. It's free to download. Go to itch. The link is in the description below where you can go download it for free and give it a rating if you've already played it and you like it or you don't, whatever. Um, let me know. Uh, leave, a dis leave a comment if you want to. Um, what else? Discord. Come join us on the Discord. We have a server, we have lots of people, and lots of talented individuals like to come and show their art. And there's a self-promo, so you can advertise your stuff there. Um, yeah. I put a link uh, to my PayPal, so if you want to just drop a donation, you can. Uh, that's always an option. But otherwise, if you would like to support what I do on this channel, I have a Patreon page, which is a monthly subscription type thing. You choose whatever amount you want to um subscribe to uh, a, a dollar a month two dollars a month three dollars a month you can pick the number and i have tiers that offer certain rewards uh, if you want me to play your game in a first impressions video that is a twenty dollar level and that is the the highest thing that i'm um, providing a perk for um, except for the promoter which is i think is taken up um, anyway that's enough plugging my stuff my guy's still bouncing i'm gonna press him. get him going this game is is already um a lot of fun to mess with. I'm glad we decided to make a physics-based platformer because it's going to be a mess, but it's going to be a ton of fun. So um, I hope that you guys join me tomorrow. Uh, actually, not tomorrow. Um, it is Friday. Have a good weekend, everybody. Um, I'm going to be streaming Monday through Friday, 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, unless otherwise posted on the Discord official tab. And so have a great weekend. I'm going to mess around with this project a little bit. Actually, I'm going to probably watch a lot of tutorials and, and mess around a little bit. Um, trying to figure out what to do with collisions. But hopefully you guys have a fantastic weekend. I love you guys very much. We'll see you guys on Monday. Bye-bye.